Hey guys, this is Ken Ross here and I'm a business consultant that specializes in reducing costs for businesses by looking at their essential exp expenses. And this is video number two in my series on business tech related tips. I'm actually going to go into some great detail and you may want to stay subscribed and on to this actual series because I'm actually going to start detailing how I actually create some of these videos. Now I know I've received a lot of questions when I'm out telling people about my channel like hey how do you make these videos how do you make them look so great you have such great lighting or you have a nice quality picture you do these interviews and they're very interactive how do you do some of that so I'm gonna actually break this down and if you aren't following along on this channel I'm gonna put on this this side of the screen a link to the the channel and this actual series so that you can follow along as I create this but my good friend Jeff Tockman asked me this question one day randomly and I actually recorded it for this very purpose I wanted to make sure I recorded his questions to me and my answers and I put it in a nice interview format so let's check that out yeah I asked you how do you record a video and upload it to YouTube to a to a website or send it in an email as content inside the email so now we're going to record your answer ken how do you do this my, i'm going to record my answer absolutely so yes i will record this interview via zoom because it's an easy way to do it the second thing is i'm actually going to edit it i'm going to take all of this stuff and and edit it in imovie right what zoom does is it gives me a double box and i can actually switch between both views and a split screen without too many issues it actually makes it really easy to edit this video and then after I'm done editing and I've produced a final version of it, I will export it out of iMovie, put it into OneDrive, where I then send a link to that to the person I want to review the, the, the video. And that actually is a link that they can access on, you know, on a browser, on their phone, whatever they want to use to, to view it. Um, they can view it there, give me the approval, and if that's that works, then what I do is I take that video file, I literally drag it into YouTube, and put all the relevant information in there to publish the video to YouTube. If somebody doesn't have iMovie, are there other pieces of software that people would use, or that they can get from like, if they use, for example, uh, like Google devices from the Android um, store, the place, the Google Play Store, yes. um, that they could use to edit the video. You have a suggestion aside from iMovie as to what else they could use to edit? Absolutely, that's another good question. So Adobe makes Premiere. You actually have to have a license for that. I believe it's like a hundred dollars a year. You can also use a free product, I believe, that does some basic editing called Canva. Um, I've been told it's pretty good. I haven't used it because iMovie is kind of the standard. And then if you really want to get into professional level editing besides uh, Adobe Premiere, you can use Final Cut Pro, which is also a Mac product. That is really robust. You can do a lot of things, a lot more things than you could in any of those other products. Can you use Final Cut Pro on like a Chromebook or you'd have to have a computer that you could you have, download yeah. the software to the computer? Yeah. Final Cut Pro is only Mac based. Adobe Premiere is kind of the PC version of that. I believe Adobe Premiere actually is also web-based, so you can use that inside of a Chromebook mm -hmm. because Chrome is all browser-based. And I assume Canva, if it's free, that's probably browser-based as well. You don't yes, need to Canva download the software. You just do it online. Yeah, Canva is 100% online. Okay. So, yeah. And then you talked about OneDrive. Can you just as easily use Google Drive? Yeah and put your video in Google Drive or uh, Dropbox or I don't know if there's other ones that you want to name. Well, you can use any any of solution like that. Uh, I believe Amazon has its own version of it too, if you want to use mm. Amazon's version of it too. Um, I just, I use OneDrive because I have the Office products and OneDrive is, is cheap because I already paid for it, so. Okay. And then I guess the details of how you do the video editing, that's maybe more the, beyond the scope of what we're talking about here, but <laughs> hopefully most of these tools like Canva are probably a, somewhat self-explanatory. You put the beginning here and the end here, and then you can cut out pieces and 
merge the video together, I imagine. That's that's the art, right? Is how do you do the editing uh, creatively and also efficiently. You can get really into editing video. It could take you hours to do a 20 minute video. For me, it fortunately doesn't take me that long. The, the hardest part for me is I wanna watch the whole thing um, from start to finish at the end. So I literally double the time that it takes me to edit typically because I, I'm, I'm a perfectionist. I imagine some of the additional things that you can do in the editing is swipes, you know, like fade in, fade out, or have the screen come down from the top or from left to right, like sort of like in a PowerPoint, but more, more advanced. And then also, I imagine you could put text at the bottom of the screen. You could put, like, if you're interviewing me, you could put my website or my phone number or my name at the bottom. And that's a video editing feature as well to put text on the screen. Mm -hmm. Are there other things that you're doing in a video aside from those things I just mentioned? Yes, I am. I'm doing like cutaways. I'll do screenshots and then cut away to those screenshots and display those. The Ken Burns effect. I'm sure everybody's uh, familiar with that. That is kind of a, another technique I use at, at times, but but mostly for these interviews, I tend to just want to, you know, use two two views of the people that we're interviewing in the split screen that that comes with Zoom. So it's it's pretty nice. I'm imagining if someone wasn't so concerned or at all concerned with as much the high quality and didn't need cutaways or or edits, that they could just record a video in Zoom and then just upload it to OneDrive or Google Drive or Dropbox. And then from there, they could put it into uh, into an email or into a YouTube channel or onto their website just from the actual file inside of the OneDrive or the Google Drive. Is that right? Or that does it need to be converted from the recording? That is absolutely correct. You could do that. Um, and I believe, I know a couple of folks that have their own YouTube channel they do their own solo recordings using Zoom. I don't recommend that because of the quality that Zoom creates these videos in. Uh, you can actually create a much better quality video with other software that's free to use as well. Um, but if you want a cheap man's way of doing it and you want to share the screen, you want to do all kinds of other things that Zoom allows you to do, it's an easy way to uh, be a one-man show and do some creative editing without actually using a photo editing solution. You don't have to create anything. You could just do it all in Zoom and record it. If someone was just going to record themselves and post their own video onto YouTube where they didn't need to use Zoom to have another person participate, mm -hmm. is that just using a video camera and recording themselves? Or is there some other solution on the computer that uses the computer's camera? There are. There are many different ways to do this. I will tell you the way that I do it because I do actually produce solo videos for myself. I use a very nice DSLR camera and it comes packaged with a software that you can install on any computer and that will allow you to capture what's on the camera onto your computer with just a simple cable. Um, that is going to produce a much higher quality and much better quality video and audio than Zoom could do because Zoom is going to compress it. It's going to make it so that it's uh, in a, a, um, a transferable format. That's what I prefer to do. You can use iMovie. You can use a lot of those video editing softwares to capture right into those places if you want. You could probably go to Canva and, and route to your camera and record from there. There are ways you can do it if you're just doing it by yourself that are far, far better than um, using Zoom by itself. I've noticed before in a long time ago when I recorded things on my Zoom subscription that it will send me a message, which I've never really looked into saying that I've kind of filled up my capacity. I don't know if I'm saying that right. Yeah. Is there some sort of special subscription that you have to Zoom that allows you to record larger videos without filling up your allotted space on the Zoom platform? So Zoom has two ways to capture video. One is through their cloud platform. So everything that's recorded gets uploaded to the cloud and that's how you can then, you know, transfer it to your computer or manipulate it however you want. That's one way. The second way is to actually record it to your computer directly. 
And that's the way I choose to do it. There is no limitation other than do you have the space to store the file that it's creating when you're recording uh, the video. All right, so if I've, in my Zoom settings, I've opted for the record in the cloud, that's why it might be sending me this message saying, I've taken up all my Zoom cloud space and they might want me to pay more per month than I'm currently paying to get more cloud space. Am I Absolutely. getting that right? Yep. And then if I have a Chromebook, which I do, I'm on a Chromebook right now, I don't have hardly any space on my Chromebook, but right. could I get it where the Zoom video would record and put it directly into my Google Drive? I don't know if that's a solution or not. I would say okay. uh, from what I understand of how it works, the answer is no, but... It's worth a shot, I mean, to see if you can do something like that. Great. All right, I've run out of questions. Thanks for uh, answering. I think we've made uh, some good content because I'm sure if I have these questions, well, I'm not sure, but I really think that if I have these questions, I'm sure a lot of other people do. And this just shows what a, what a great resource you are, Ken. Thanks very much. Okay, guys, a lot of information in that video. Really hope you enjoyed watching that interview and Jeff asking all those questions of me and what it is I really thought about my process. As we go along, I'll, I'll talk about other things. Like I'm gonna get into a lot of detail on how I actually do edits in iMovie. So you'll see, I'll capture my screen and I'll show you clips on how I do edits. I'll I'll also show you some of the equipment I use. I actually use very specialized equipment that you can easily buy on the internet or at a Best Buy or whatever that you can also use for your own purposes to make some uh, videos of your own because I really do believe that businesses can benefit greatly from sharing their expertise online and providing that expertise to their customer base or to other people in business. It's a great way to have something that's very unique and distinctive and it actually doesn't cost a lot. It costs some time to do sometimes, but if it takes off and you have a good following, it's definitely worth every bit of time that you put into it. So with that, I really hope you're enjoying these tech tips. Please put in the comment section below if there are any, if there are any topics tech related that you'd like me to present on. I will actually stop my tour of my setup just to produce that video in the middle because I really do feel like some variety as I get into this. I, I probably have like three or four more videos um, around my setup how I produce content so that you guys can really have the detail that you need to be confident to do this. So if you put in the comment section a topic you want me to cover, I'll be sure to cover that first. So please stay subscribed, tell your friends about this channel, let them all know I'm out here really trying hard to provide value to businesses with this very good insight into how to better enhance your business, how to grow it in such a way that sets you apart from your competition. And so please connect with me on different social media platforms, it's all in the description below, and visit my website, IamKenRoss.com. Until I see you next time, I'll see you around.